This is the coolant drain valve. It's right next to the uh, one of the hoses that comes uh, from the um, block to the, I think it's like the thermostat to the bottom of the radiator. And you can actually put a tube on the end of the, um, the valve or you can just open it up and let it uh, run into a pan. You're going to need some kind of pan to drain the coolant into. Uh, the pan in the foreground, I, I bought that a long time ago, probably back in the 70s sometime. I don't even know if you can get those anymore. Um, the, the one in the background, that actually is kind of nice. It's I got that at like Home Depot or something that's for mixing concrete, and it was only like 2 or $3 dollars. And I've used that a lot for oil changes, everything. You know, you can see there's there's some concrete in it, but that doesn't matter because you're going to be throwing the coolant away. This is the radiator cap. You never want to take the cap off with the engine warm. You want to do this whole procedure after the car is completely cooled off. These next pictures are pictures of the uh, bleed bolt. Uh, you take this out and it will bleed the air out of the system. You, you know, when you're putting the, um, the coolant back in, it has to be, um, there, there's air trapped in there and you got to bleed it out. It's the bleed, wherever you bleed it from, it's got to be below the radiator top or you won't get all the air out and you get an air bubble and that's not good. The car can overheat. And um, when I took this, this bolt out, um, it actually had some crud in back of it and I had to take a nail and poke through and a lot of this is because um, a lot of people don't put distilled water in. Uh, you should actually refill your the water component that you fill your radiator with should be distilled water or denatural, de, something denaturalized or something like that but it takes all the minerals and all the chemicals out because they uh, react with the coolant and this is a form of what happens, all this crud that builds up in the, in the cooling system. Here's a, a picture of the EGR that's blocking everything. And um, I also had to disconnect the, um, I guess it's the MAF, the mass airflow sensor uh, cable. And there's a tubing on the side. And I just, I just, I, I tried to push the, the little, um, connect the holders that hold the, both those cables and the tube out of the way. And I just ended up just cutting them and I just put wire, uh, you know, um, a wire tie through the hole and, and uh, fasten the cable and I put it all back together. So I didn't know how tough that, that bolt was to, to, um, to remove the bleed, the bleed bolt. So um, I didn't want to strip it out or anything like that. So I, Here's a picture of uh, the air box removed. I also replaced the, along with the, the um, both of the uh, radiator uh, hoses, I also replaced the, both the, um, the uh, heater hoses and um, I replaced the, um, the EGR hose with 5 16th, um, just regular, um, you know, reinforced like power steering line. And the, the one that I missed was the one that goes from the EGR to the, um, to the throttle body. So there may be on the, to get the hose broken loose, um, after you've taken the, uh, hose clamp off, um, what you'd want to do is put a pair of, uh, like uh, water pump pliers on there and just twist the hose back and forth a couple of times and that'll break it loose where you can just pull it right off.